So what is the best gravel or clay to be using within an aquaponic system? This video is all about identifying what type of gravel or clay that you can use based on surface area. I consider surface area and pH to be two separate things to look at, so I've broken it down into two different videos. So this is the first video, well I say first, but this is one video that identifies the surface area. And when we talk about surface area, we're talking about the bacteria, where it lives, and that there's enough room for bacteria to grow. So this video goes through and talks about the different types of gravel and clay that you can get your hands on, and the different surface areas, and how they work within your aquaponic system. And just as, you know, the heads up here, I have a mix within mine, and that is good too. You simply need to understand how important surface area is, and make sure it's covered within your aquaponic system. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm putting videos up every couple of days, so make sure that you hit subscribe so you can get all of them. Okay, all right, so I wanna to talk to you today about surface area. Surface area is critical when it comes to aquaponics because that's where our bacteria live, and we wanna be using uh, different types of clay or gravel that has high surface area. So I'm gonna take you over and show you the table. We've got a whole heap of different options set out to be able to show you what does have good surface area and what doesn't. So we're not talking about the pH here, how it's going to affect the pH, purely the surface area. Okay, so we want to understand how that works and is what we're, we need to make sure that what we're looking for is actually the right thing. Okay, so I'm going to move you on over and show you what I'm talking about. Sorry to interrupt, look, to really boost your aquaponics learning, jump on over to my website for some free online training and it's really structured and it's gonna help you get a really good grasp of how this works. Rather than trying to pick it bits and pieces everywhere, let's get the, the foundations happening, okay? So some free online training at www.theaquaponicslady.com. Jump on over and get your free training. Hey guys, today we're talking about the surface area for your grow bed or your filter. And it's important to understand that you're, if you're using an actual grow bed, then that is your filter, okay? And you need to be able to remove solid waste and you need to be able to convert all of that ammonia into nitrite and then nitrate so that the veggies can use the, uh, the nitrate. Now, often people will look at what the options are and as I said, we're talking filtration and surface area at the moment, so we'll go through pHs and, and things like that differently another time. This is called, this one is called a bio ball and this one is called K1. And these are what is used within aquaculture and in some uh, aquarium filters. Okay, they have a huge surface area. So all the bacteria lives in all of those little nooks and crannies. Same with this one. We've got lots and lots of places to, to live. And so you need lots of surface area so you can, you've got lots and lots of filtration. So people will look at what are their options in relation to surface area, although they actually think about what's cheapest and honestly you know your expanded clay volcanic rock it um it has a heap of surface area this is what's commonly used in both aquaponics and hydroponics but for aquaponics the reason it's used is because it's got such it's so porous you can see the cracked one there or the broken open it's got lots and lots of surface area the problem is though it's super expensive Okay, so when we're wanting to do things a bit more affordably, we look at what are the options. Now, this is three different types of gravel from my local landscaper. This is blue metal, this is river rock, and this is scoria, which is another form of volcanic rock. And again, we're only looking at um, surface area right now. Out of all of three these, the river rock has the less surface area. It doesn't have all that many holes inside of it or around it, okay? So it's, even though it's, it's well, it's fairly smooth actually, but you can see that there's little little crevices in it. It doesn't have the same surface area as your, your bio balls or your expanded clay. But it's an awful lot cheaper. This rock, it's um, not to be confused with uh, recycled cement but it is a type of drainage gravel. It's called blue metal here. 
and again you can see that it's got lots and lots of edges it's not overly sharp um, but it is a lot cheaper of course the problem is it also really increases your pH dangerously if you're not careful um, so that's another option it does not have the same surface area as your expanded clay or your bio balls okay so you need to make sure if you're using something like this that perhaps you do have some of these in your filter as well and Simba's just walking past to say hello now the ones at the back which is the scoria it has a lot more surface area because see how porous that is now these are small ones um, I think what 10 mil you can get them in 20 mil but lots of they're very light not as light as the expanded clay the expanded clay is super light okay so these are still quite light in comparison to the the gravels okay so both of these are, are very heavy whereas the scoria is still quite light incredibly porous but you can't always get it everywhere and the other problem with it is it takes intense cleaning now i'm not talking about just dunking it in the water or hosing it down a bit you need to go a lot more uh, intensive on your cleaning schedule for this it's something that I usually use a cement mixer I just hire one out and use a cement mixer to clean it I bought a, a 15 kilo bag from the local hardware store and I rinsed out it as thoroughly as I could because I was wanting to use it in this system for something and um, I then dro I took all of the solid waste like solid waste all of the um, well the solid that was on it you know all of the the, the the deposits the mineral deposits and I dried it out and I've now weighed it and in a 15 kilo bag there was 800 grams of dried uh, minerals dust that's a huge ratio really compared to this just needed a little bit of a rinse and so did the river gum but it's a lot cheaper than your expander clay and it has a huge surface area so if you've got the time and you've got the ability to give it a good clean, your scoria is a really good option. Your expanded clay, as I said, super light, lots and lots of porous um, parts in it, you can see. Lots and lots of holes, lots and lots of space for your bacteria, so it's, it is the perfect thing to use. Uh, but for a bag of this, it's $55. For a bag of this, I think it was something like maybe $15 for, for a bag of this I, you know I shoveled it from the landscape myself and it was five bucks per bag uh, so if you can if you can get the scoria the scoria is a really good option if you can't afford the expanded clay and look you've just got to make sure you've got the time to clean it if you don't you're going to pop it in your system and all of that dry uh, mineral dust it's going to end up making your system red and while we sit there and go that's not that bad it can cause suffocation for the fish uh, after a while and people say oh but you know it'll sink to the bottom well yeah it, it will but you know fish kind of live at the bottom they kick and they move and that causes it to mix up so from a surface area perspective so we're basing this on an aquaculture or even an aquarium model where you're needing to have lots of whoops surface area and off it goes the expanded clay is your better option scoria if you can give it a good clean you can also add a fines filter to help clean out your scoria uh, and then you've got your other two things you do need to test the ph and see how it, how these affect your ph now i know the effect of all of them but um at the moment yet yeah, we're just talking about surface area the other thing to remember is and we'll point it out a bit later is what's it like with your hands and it's interesting those who have really successful aquaponic systems they always talk about using the expanded clay saving up making sure that that's what you use but it's awesome for the filter and that's you know the ideal situation and the other thing the other reason is the, the, the scoria so this one off the back it's really rough on your hands and when it's wet and it's cold and you're digging in there to get any roots out from you know your recent harvest it can easily cut your hands okay it's a absolute nightmare on your fingers I'm used to it I kind of don't notice it anymore I get lots of little nicks and I'm just not used to it like I, I just don't pay attention anymore but it's something to be very very mindful of is that that scoria rock can easily 
be such a hazard for your hands. So from that perspective, people will often go towards some type of small gravel. As I said, we've got the blue metal here. I know that the blue metal will cause the pH to rise. I know that the river rock won't affect the pH at all, neither will the scoria and neither will the expander clay. But we'll do some tests to confirm all of that because, well, everyone likes to be able to see things happening, don't they? So, as I said, we're talking about the surface area and I always put some of these in any aquaponic system that I build because you can't have too much filtration. Okay? You, but you definitely can have not enough. Okay? I would much rather remove all of that ammonia and have it all sitting as nitrate ready for the veggies to take up than having not enough filtration and having ammonia still sitting there with the fish. Okay, so water flow and filtration are two key components of your system. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or comments, make sure you do leave them below and hit that subscribe button so you can find out when I've got more videos being posted. And don't forget to follow me on other social media because I do different lives on different social media on different days. So, again, Thank you for watching. I really value and appreciate your time and I hope you enjoyed it.